When Russia launched its attack on Ukraine, a wide variety of commentators believed that there was at least one silver lining in this catastrophic cloud. Putin's assault on the liberal order, they hoped, would expose and delegitimize the illiberal populist forces that have been surging for years. One commentator speculated that the Ukraine war could end the age of populism. Another, the scholar Francis Fukuyama, saw it as an opportunity for people to finally reject right-wing nationalism. Alas, six weeks into this conflict, such speculation looks like wishful thinking. In Europe, two pivotal elections in Hungary and France tell the tale. As recently as a week ago, it was possible to suggest, as an essay in The Atlantic did, that the Ukraine war was upending European politics by highlighting the illiberal and pro-Putin records of the French far-right leader Marine Le Pen and the Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. Experts were quoted saying that Orban was desperately trying to reframe the events around the war and predicted that the French would now see Macron as probably the only person who can lead them through this crisis. In fact, Viktor Orban won re-election and a fourth straight term in office by a handy margin, getting around 53 percent of the vote compared to the opposition coalition's roughly 34 percent. The same day, voters in Serbia re-elected a populist, staunchly pro-Putin president by a landslide. In France, where the first round of presidential elections set for today, polling suggests that Macron's lead has been evaporating and that Le Pen has surged significantly. As a New York Times headline says, even before France votes, the French right is a big winner. In Europe, at least, right-wing populism continues to thrive. It's not that Russia's actions in Ukraine are popular. They just don't dominate people's worldview. The reputations of pro-Russian politicians have not suffered from the war as many expected. Frustrated by the Hungarian leaders cozying up to Putin, Volodymyr Zelensky took a gamble and actually denounced Orban, calling him virtually the only one in Europe to openly support Mr. Putin. It didn't work. In America, one sees similar forces at work, though they are not as strong. Initially, in the first weeks of the war, the Republican Party seemed to revert to its historic hawkishness on foreign policy. Many of its older guard are vociferously anti-Putin and pro-Ukrainian. But that would not describe the position of the man who is still its most popular leader, Donald Trump, who has praised Putin since the invasion. And why shouldn't I root for Russia, because, which I am? Because those of us who Fox News' highest-rated so anchor, Tucker Carlson, who two years ago declared that he was on Russia's side in its battle against Ukraine, has recently taken to repeating Russian propaganda about alleged American-sponsored bioweapons labs in Ukraine. It's worth noting that there are some mitigating factors at play here. Viktor Orban has manipulated Hungary's democracy in ways that give him structural advantages. In 2010, he gave citizenship to 2.4 million ethnic Hungarians living abroad and portrayed himself as the only defender of their rights, which gained him massive support from these newly minted voters. He squashed the independent media. The government actively promotes Orban, sending out publicly funded posters with his image. These kinds of practices have led Freedom House to rate Hungary as the only European Union country that is just partly free. Even so, right-wing populism in Hungary and elsewhere is genuinely popular. While Le Pen has taken advantage of rising inflation, castigating Macron's government for price hikes of all kinds, her fundamental appeal comes from her strident cultural nationalism. Orban, Le Pen, and others on the right constantly rail against immigrants, multiculturalism, LGBTQ rights, and le wokisme, a new phrase that has cropped up in France. At the same time, these leaders have cast aside much of the free market economics of the old right. Le Pen has denounced many of Macron's neoliberal reforms and embraced the old status policies of the French left, such as the 35-hour work week and early retirement. She has publicly speculated that she might bring in members of the left who agree with her ideas on protectionism and industrial policy. Orban has long practiced a kind of populist statism that doles out generous state subsidies to groups his party favors. In America, Tucker Carlson spends little time on the Ukraine war, 
focusing his program instead on a daily diet of outrage about woke politics and cancel culture. Leading Republicans like Ron DeSantis do the same. If you were to listen to the American right these days, you would think that the most pressing issues in the world today are school boards that are indoctrinating children with ideas about gender fluidity. It is true that these ideas appeal to only part of the electorate, especially those who are older, more rural, and less educated. But by now, it should be clear that these voters are numerous enough and passionate enough to win elections on both sides of the Atlantic.